Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Prague Special Championships. We have got a fantastic day ahead for you and we're going to start it off with the first of our top eight games. Oh yeah, I am really just so excited to start this one. We will have a very famous player, I'm sure you all heard of him. Yeah. It's Norwegian superstar Todd Raklev. Absolutely. Uh, what what better way to start off the day than to have Todd Reklev and he's going to be up against uh, Zenyek. Uh, he's going to be playing Volcanion today to try and take down Todd's Zoropod deck. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, in case you have followed us on social media, you probably have realized that we were not so sure about what deck Zenyek is going to play a lot. Uh, the reason was that there is uh, someone else in the tournament with the very same name and we accidentally got his deck list. So that's why we informed you wrongly. We are very sorry for that. But yeah, I mean, easy mistake to make. Two people with the same name, down to the very same letter. What chances do you have, right? Yeah. So, um, However, we'll swipe over now to our top eight game and hopefully we're in for an exciting 60 minutes. So, pretty sure Todd isn't playing a Dragonite EX. No, I just opened the standard one and you said, let's uh, go into the game and then I had to put yeah. transition. Yeah, it's okay. It's we fine. I mean... We're ready. Hopefully there is a cheeky Dragonite EX tech in there. That would be pretty exciting. <laughs> but uh, just to go over uh, the deck list really quick, everyone's pretty familiar with Tord's Zoropod list by now. Uh, a few people here play the exact 60 cards. He's got the inclusion of the Oranguru to combat that mill, and um, obviously his high count of Acer Rollers, high counts of Bridget's, and of course those parallel cities to uh, win in the mirror match. Yeah, and he also plays a uh, mellow puzzle of time. Things you you just play in Zorak decks. Um, what what? How does Zenyek's deck list look like? Uh, so Zenyek's deck list is really really cool. Uh, quite a few techs in here for a Volcanian deck list. He's actually playing the same Oranguru to combat the oh. mill decks um, and manage those resources a little bit better, which is quite surprising. As Volcanian normally is known to have quite a good matchup against the mill decks. However, he's included this. Hopefully we'll see it come into play for him here. As well as that, he's got a one-off Acerola, which really could oh, interesting. come in interesting here, especially when Tord's deck really revolves around two-shot and Pokemon, apart from that crossing cut GX. Yeah, and we see those players setting up and putting down their prize cards. Um, we see on Tord's side, Guzma prize one, um, double colorless energy, another Guzma, Tapu Lele. Uh, it's not too bad. We mentioned that yesterday. Having Guzma Price is not too bad. You don't really want to start with it. Um, uh, we also see the Mew EX in there, right? Oh, I know it's quite Mew hard EX. to see, but uh, oh, I, can't, I see. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, definitely the Mew EX. However, on a uh, Zenyak side, we see two of his three Cynthia prized in oh, there. Oh, that, that's um, annoying. It'll be interesting oh, to I see. I think it's two Cynthias and one uh, Enhanced Hammer. Yep, that's definitely right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out for him, as Volcanion's known for being quite aggressive. He could go ahead and take some prizes early on here, meaning that his ends will become less and less effective mm -hmm. for himself. So it'll be really interesting to see whether those Cynthia's will end up hurting him, as it's going to be one of the free, few last prizes that he draws. Yeah, but, uh, well, that's going to be quite hurtful, but he also plays some ends, some sycamores, he plays a lily, that's actually the go-to supporter you want to have in your first turn, so let's see what else he has. Uh, it looks like Tord started the rank, he's playing a Tapu Lele, using the Wonder Tech ability, probably going for a Bridget. Yeah, it would definitely be a Bridget here. I would imagine that in this matchup, he really wants to be revolving around those Aroats, maybe one Galissapod on the field, yeah. but if he gets down too many Wimpods, I imagine the Fire Pokemon are going to burn them right up. Yeah, true that. Um, but still, Volcanion is, it needs some time to set up. Uh, same goes with Zorak, but usually Zorak is set up a little bit faster, so uh, it's gonna be an interesting match. Uh, what do you think about the matchup in general? Uh, so the matchup for me is a difficult one, as Volcanion is always a deck that seems to come around. It's had quite a lot of success since it's released in Seam Siege. Yeah. As much as it's never the most talked about deck or everyone's favorite deck, it always seems to be making these top cuts and sort of finishing right up there with the best of the mm -hmm. decks. However, 
it does rely a lot on hitting your elixirs yeah. and having a fast, fast setup. And I often find that with Volcanion, if your opponent starts to keep up with you in those early turns and putting a lot of pressure on you while you're trying to get those elixirs down and power up, you're going to have a tough time trying to get started. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and as well, I think when you're going up against Tord, who pretty much knows this matchup inside out, he's probably tested this hundreds, even thousands of times. <laughs> uh, Zenyek's going to have to maybe have some tricks up his sleeves, perhaps even using that Oranguru there to keep those elixirs coming through his deck. So he's able to power up those Volcanians mm -hmm. turn after turn after turn. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, looks like he's playing an Ultra Ball. Maybe going for a Chapel Lily and then the Lily. Yeah, I mean, the Lily is in deck, as we can see, but it looks like he's going for a Sycamore. He's moved that to the top of his deck. Oh, yeah. Perhaps not noticing that the Lily's in there yet, though, and maybe opting to go for that afterwards. Uh, I could see an Elixir in his hand. Um... So perhaps not the best idea to Sycamore before using his resources. <laughs> However, at the same time, um, there, is, there are two fire energy in his hand. So we might want to get those into the discard pile oh, yeah, as early course. as possible. As he's only got one Volcanion on field. So one steam up is the most that he can use right now. Yeah, and of course you want to lose, use your uh, baby Volcanion. He is opting to go for the Lily though, so he does drop that. That'll take him up to all the way, uh, all the way up to eight cards in hand on the first turn. Lily, a really interesting card where any other turn in the game, it will allow you to draw up to six cards in your hand. However, if you play it on the very first turn in the game, you get up to yeah. eight. And that's pretty huge. Eight cards in your hand. That there should definitely be something in there to work with. Yeah, and we see the first elixir come down here, and he does hit it. I imagine this will go straight down onto the Turtonator. Oh, yeah, uh, you mentioned earlier, I, I just saw that, that he will play the resource management Oranguru. He does not. He plays the uh, instruct Oranguru. Of uh, course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it, of course. It's still early in the morning. Don't worry. <laughs> of course. There we go. So we see one steam up here coming down on Volcanion. I imagine that he is going to Lily now. Yeah, yeah. so that'll take his hand all the way up to eight. We see the Brooklet Hill land in hand as well as another Volcanion and, and two elixirs. Oh, two, yeah. And two elixirs. Uh, he's pretty much got everything he wants here. I imagine the Brooklet Hill is going to hit the field here. And he will grab another Volcanion. As well as wow. the two elixirs here, and probably he fully setting one. up that Turtonator. And we get the second attachment there. That Turtonator is looking very threatening very quickly. Yeah, it does. Oh my god, he managed to build that up so fast. If he now has a float stone in hand or a switch, that would be so huge. It, it doesn't look like he has either of those cards. However, he does have a Guzma for his next turn. So if he's able to keep Tord away from his Turtonator on Tord's next turn, he can actually bounce in with that uh, Turtonator and perhaps even take a knockout on a Zoroark GX. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's true. I, I haven't really thought of that because it's it's so early and oh my god. Look. And he hits the float stone and we're probably going to see Turtonator bounce in here. Um, Perhaps using Bright Flame on the Tapu Koko. However, that will take his Turtonator down to one energy. Um, Wouldn't it be a little bit... Well, he can't really use the DX attack as there aren't too many energies in the discard pile. So... Hmm. Oh, okay. So he attaches the fourth energy, which means that after wow. this turn, his Turtonator will only bounce down to two energy, meaning that it only takes one attachment for him next turn to take that all the way back up and be able to use that Bright Flame attack again. Uh, yeah, very smart play there from Zenyek. It means that just with two steam ups, he's able to uh, take a knockout on one of Tord's Zoroarks. Yeah. And we see a regular Tord Reklev hand there, dropping <laughs> down two Zoroark in the same turn, ready to get that trade ability going. And he's definitely gonna be able to keep up pace with Zenyek at this rate. Yeah, he's playing very fast. And to we see, activated. Yeah, activated and evolved. Okay. So we see the Cynthia there. Doesn't look like it gave Tord too many options, but of course he has got those trade abilities to move his hand around a little bit. Yeah, let's see what he got here. Uh, he 
he bends the uh, Oranguru. Uh, we see a choice ban and a Guzma off that yeah. trade. He, um, he traded the uh, Galaxicot away, probably not really wanting to use it in that matchup, um, as it has weakness to fire your Pokemon. Yeah, I think the only benefit that uh, Galissapod might have in this matchup is just being able to use that crossing cut ability. However, it's quite dangerous to leave that on the field. A very easy two prizes for Volcanion or Terminator to be able to take. So it's all yeah. probably only having to put that Wimpod down if he really must. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, we do see um, Ultra Ball. Tord also has double puzzle in his hand as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he uses that as this Zoroark definitely won't be taking a knockout this turn. However, this Turtonator could easily return that knockout. Yeah, um... Zanyak just had a really, really good start, and it's it's hard to counter that one, but Torrid also is a very experienced player, and uh, he has proven a few times already that he knows how to keep calm, how to wait a little bit, and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, um, I imagine by now, Todd Reckler feels no pressure whatsoever. Um, to walk into any game like it's a game he's going to win, even if it's the worst matchup possible. And we see the final trade. The final trade. The final trade. And the double puzzle comes down. He grabs one Cynthia and Tapu Coco. <coughs> um, I'm just checking. Uh, Zanyak is not playing any Ho O D X in his deck. Um, Ho O D X is weak to uh, Lightning. That could have been reason to grab the Tapu Coco, but of course, having a free retreat Pokemon in game is great. Uh, we see the resource management Oranguru uh, yeah. going toward to grab three cards from his discard pile and put them at the, at the bottom of the stack. Of course, he grabs that double puzzle, allowing him to go into his discard again during yeah. this game. And we see Zenyak top deck another Guzma here. Wow. He could Guzma one off the Zorax and then retreat his Volcanion that has the Flaystone attached to it. But he decided to not play too greedy, but will play safe one. He knows that he's ahead and he needs to manage his resources. He needs to build up stuff. If this Turgenator GX is getting KO'd, there's nothing he can really work with. So he decides to not play too aggressive and rather build his board up. Yeah, definitely. It's really important now that he does hit some elixirs on those Volcanians, as Tord is most probably going to be two-shotting that Turtonator, meaning that he's got a chance to use that Nitro Tank attack, getting the energy on Volcanian afterwards. So if they do have one or two energies on them already, he can spread those energies around yeah. quite nicely. Yeah, true. Um... And we see a fine fire energy hit the hand of Zenyek meaning that he's most probably going to be attaching that to Turtonator here. I think I also saw a choice band, but uh, that doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see where the fire energy hits. He could also opt to attach it to Vol and um, obviously use that Nitro Tank attack. Yeah, I think he has four energies in his discard at least. <coughs> so Nitro Tanking GX mm. wouldn't be a bad thing to do here. <coughs> Uh, as I mentioned before, it, he is a hard toy just used resource management to get back some stuff for the late game. So he could also play not that aggressive. I wonder if that's actually what Tord wanted Zen Zenyak to do. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how, how this is maybe making a difference in the later game. So, the strange thing here is that Zenyak didn't actually attach the fire energy from hand before using the Nitro Tank. Um, I think he used Steam Up to have it in his discard pile. No, it's no. still in his hand, oh. so um, perhaps leaving that for the Steam Up next turn in order to take a knockout on the Zoroark. Yeah. Um, however, surely it would have been nicer to have that energy 
on the, uh, on the Terminator, so we didn't have to attach so many of his nitro tank there, and perhaps spread those two energy over those two Volk. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to decide. I think Stanyak just, I mean, Stanyak is, uh, I think he's a rather local player, so he's from the area here. Uh, we talked to him before the match a bit. He's a very nice guy. Uh, he never played on stream before. And your first stream match in top eight of uh, special championships against such a well-known and accomplished player as Todd Redcliffe. You, you really want to make sure to, to play safe and not make any mistakes. Yeah, um, I don't know if that will come back to haunt him later on in the game. Especially with Tor drawing into that double puzzle again. We can definitely start to see him pick up some pace. Yeah. Um, Zenyak with only one fire energy in hand as well. He does need to draw another one in order to knock out the Zoroark without a choice ban. However, if he does have that choice ban, he's able to return a knockout. Yeah, um, Tord managed to draw into one of his double colorless energies, and oh my god, he's going to attack with the second attack of Oranguru, and uh, I, yeah. 60 damage and confusion. Profound knowledge. Stanyak even had to read the card. Uh, I have to admit, I'm very happy that David managed to put the scan on screen. Because I wouldn't have known the the second attack as well. <laughs> I mean, Oranguru matching up with Todd Reklev here, a profound knowledge of the game. <laughs> Swinging in right at the right time and putting down that confusion on Terminator. Um, making things awkward for Zenyek. He's going to have to use something as a Guzma to bounce off that vault now in order to jump in. However, that's pretty much what he wants to do anyway. He's able to pull a Zorowark into the active that way and just steam up the ones with that fire energy left in hand and take that knockout. Yeah, it's actually, uh, yesterday at dinner, we talked to Connor, and Connor talked to us like, D do you know what uh, the second attack of Oranguru does? Uh, we both were like, no. And he said, yeah, I played against Torrid, now I know. So <laughs> Torrid seems to do that in uh, a lot of games. Yeah, confusion obviously forcing you to have yeah. the retreat. Uh, for those of you that are newer to the game or don't know what confusion does, if you go to attack, you have to roll a dice. If that dice hits tails, then that means that you have to take 30 damage yep. on your Pokemon. So, confusion meaning that you're going to have to Guzma out or retreat in order to get rid of that and then come back into the active if you do want to attack. Yeah, special conditions uh, yeah, are not a thing anymore when, you're when your Pokemon enters the bench. So, uh, what Stanyak did here he, is he guzma he put the Volcanium with the Float Stone in the active position and then retreated, so, yeah. And we see the Orangiri move back into the active. <laughs> now, we also saw the KO on one Zorok, so he kept the Fire Energy in his hand to use Steam Up, so uh, with the extra damage from Steam Up and the uh, Choice Band, it was enough to KO the Zorok GX. Yeah, it looks like Tord here is going to double puzzle, perhaps grabbing that Field Blower, Knowing that it's a huge threat to his Zoroark. Uh, do you think we're going to see the Profound Knowledge again? No. No, it's going to be a <laughs> retreat here. Moving that Zoroark to the active. <coughs> and yeah, he, he he moved the Zoroark with this plus turn attached to it in the active I position. think we'll see the double puzzle here for the energy as well. Getting that down. And Field Blower. Yeah. He's blowing away the choice band and the float stone on the vault. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, one of the downsides of Volcanion is its hefty three retreat cost. Yeah. Um, meaning that when Volcanion doesn't have any energy on it, Zenyak's going to have to find three energy to put on it or a float stone. Uh, we can see here that he only plays two float stone, oh. one switch and a total of three Guzma. So Tord's gonna be hoping that by ending him down to three cards in hand, he's not gonna be able to find anything. And later on in the game, hopefully drag that Volk into the active, and start doing some damage. Uh, however, Stenya plays the Instruct Oranguru. Drawing up to three cards every turn is not that huge, but it can make a difference. Yeah, so we see the N and Guzma land in Zenyak's hand anyway. 
and um, a baby vlog, which does not really yeah, use it a lot. Uh, we also see Troy, he has these blue dice and uses it to count the <coughs> trade abilities he has used. So if you guys have been wondering what Troy is doing with that dice, um, he's just making sure to to not use more trade abilities or less trade abilities than he can. Um, and the knockout there on the Turtonator, moving that Lele into active. Um, Zenyak here hoping to get a retreat off that Lele. Using the Guzma, however, he's going to have to either drag Oranguru or Tapu Koko into the active to get a knockout here. Perhaps that might be good for him anyway, taking him down to an even two prizes, mm -hmm. leaving him with just a knockout and a GX Pokemon to win the game. Yeah, um... Exactly. <laughs> uh, we see the Guzma, so just as you mentioned, hey, he yeah. goes for the Tapu Koko. Uh, probably the right choice here. Yeah, he's on an uneven price count, so that makes sense. And Volcanic Heat takes that knockout, and he does grab the Brooklet Hill off the prizes. Not really going to help him much this late stage in the game. No, not at all. And Tord. On the back foot here, uh, he needs to find something to push his damage output upwards. Um, this is sort of the time where Galissapod would be really effective as once that Volcanion goes down, Zenyak doesn't really have much left on his board. So a crossing cut GX here with a choice band could do a lot of damage. Yeah, I wonder if he, if he now would set up the Galisopod. It would mean that he would need to put the whip put on bench. He has only one bench slot. And if Zenyak sees that Torrid is benching a whip pod, he would probably go for the whip pod. Um, however, we see another resource management from Tord's side. Yeah, another resource management. Oh, no! Oh, no. Profound another knowledge. profound knowledge. Wow. Really making use of that second attack of Orangiri. <laughs> Tord knows the damage output of that Volcanion is a lot to handle, so if he confuses it, it's not doing anything. Wow, it's very interesting to see him using that profound knowledge so often. It's something we mentioned with Tapu Lele yesterday. Um, it, it, that's what good players do. They they sometimes use options you wouldn't really have thought about because on the first glimpse, 60 damage does not really look that good. I mean, 3 energies for 60 damage it's okay but the confusion is really what makes it good as well as that in this matchup um if those of you in the audience haven't noticed that profound knowledge attack actually becomes very relevant with the choice band actually two shots of volcanium yeah, yeah it, it's interesting to see and oranguru is only a one price card attacker so also the price trade is very good yeah and we see the instruct there bouncing zenyak into a very much needed cynthia there to try and get some cards to Start yeah. setting up some more Pokemon on his board. It's really essential here that even if he hits one Elixir to get an energy on his other Volcanion, to start making that power heater attack really relevant, setting up a second Volcanion. Yeah, that would be huge. So, but anyways, uh, power heating now will help him a lot. Uh, yeah, we see him draw into an energy. Um, He's checking towards this good pile just to make sure that he's missing anything. Uh, David Hotman putting up plenty of puns on the screen. <laughs> Trying to hard, hard to hold it together here. <laughs> um, he just said that Zenyak was checking towards discard pile as he is from Czech descent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very, very smart indeed. Uh, we see the choice ban come down on Volcanion. Uh, that could actually be quite harmful for Tord. He's already used one field blower, obviously grabbing it back with a puzzle, which means that now that Oranguru Guzma option isn't an option for him anymore. Yeah. As you can see, the, the Zoroark on the bench has a float stone on it, so we easily could have bounced that uh, Volcanion back into the active and just used profound knowledge again to knock it out. 
uh, with a one prize attacker. However, unless he hits a field blower off some of his trades, that option is not going to be available for him now. Yeah, and we see Zanyak powering up a Tapu Lele. Um, he also uh, attached two Fighting Fury belts. Um, both Volcanians now have a higher HP count, which can be hurtful, but uh, as well, we saw earlier in the game, Turret probably expected that, and that's why he managed to put the Field Blower back into his deck. And he has the Field Blower in oh. hand. Uh, getting rid of the Brooklet Hill there as well. Um, I think that might be a smart choice here, yep. as if Tor does manage to take a knockout here, uh, he knows that Zenyek would want to get another Volcanium back in play as easy as possible, and the easiest way for him to do so is using that Brooklet Hill. However, as, as well, he's literally going ahead with what I said, now with this knockout on Volk, he knows that Zenyak has got a Volk on the bench with one energy, that's all. He's not going to be able to get another one in play to set yep. it up very easily, and He's actually swung this game back in his direction here. Uh, Zenyak's board looked very powerful. However, a lot of his energies were all stacked in the same place and very much in the same areas. So what Tord has done is just very much taken it slow, yep. allowed Zenyak to play his energy down, get it all in the right place, and then Tord has gone, you know what, actually, I want that back off the board now, so I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah, and it's interesting to see how, how Tord swung the match around. And Zenyak was ahead, but Tord's deck is just so strong with all the draw, um, draw support he has. He's not that vulnerable to late game, and Zorak is, uh, not Zorak, Zenyak. <laughs> Zanyak is it? Uh, he has this instruct Oranguru, but yeah, Volcanion is just very hard to power up. I think the uh, most interesting part as well for this is Tord's board is full of DCE right now. Yeah. Zenyak does actually play two Enhanced Hammer. We've not seen any of those yet. Yeah, one of them is Prize, so we know that there's only one in his deck, and he's not really drawing through his deck that quickly. And we do see the vault come down from his hand, which is very uh, lucky for Nzenya. I think we did see it in his hand before. I must have just forgotten. But, however, we will see an energy retrieval. Two steam ups here, allowing those two energies to go into the discard. His vault to do an extra 60 damage there, plus the, uh, plus the fighting fury belt, taking it all the way up to 90 damage output from that power here, and then attaching two energy to his bench volcanians. Yeah, that's what we are for sure going to see. Uh, he used Instruct first, of course, um, maybe hoping to draw into support a card, and he drew an N. Um, it doesn't really give him a lot of hand cards, but maybe, well, having a supporter is better than nothing. Uh, he's going to draw into two more cards, which means if he can play down some cards next turn, he will be able to use Instruct again, and um, yeah. I think as well, uh, N really doesn't hurt Tord, and that's the uh, amazing thing about these Arawak decks is that even with a hand of just two cards, you can turn that into a hand of six cards just by using that trade ability yeah. and just bouncing those card counts up. Um, Tord gonna be able to get anything he needs here on this turn with only two prizes left as well. He's gonna start applying that pressure. Um, it comes down now to an energy or a two shot here. Zenyek does have that energy in hand, however, just the Fighting Fury Belt sitting there. He needs a Guzma in order to knock out yep. anything, uh, uh, in order to knock out just a one prize attacker on Tor's board in Oranguru. And he needs more than that to be able to take a knockout on Zarawak. With a, a Volcanian with a choice band, he's going to need two steam ups still. Yep. Uh, Volcanic Heat only doing 130, choice band taking it up to 160, and then of course 190 and 220. Uh, with the two steam ups, so a lot to ask for here from Zenyak. I think what what Tord wants to see now is probably an Acerola or a Max Potion if he yeah, is playing one. He's not playing Max Potion, so uh, what he's digging for now is Acerola. 
Douglas, so please yeah, I think Acerola might be good here as well as that though. Not forgetting that Zenyak actually plays that Acerola as well. We know that that's in his deck and not in his prizes. Yep. Zarawakia can't take a knockout on the Volcanian and the active. It's got 130 HP anyway, so even a maxed out Riot is beaten is only at 120. But especially with that Fighting Fury belt, taking it up to 170, Tor's going to have a hard time knocking that out with his Zarawak. Which means that Zenyet could actually Acer Roller that back up and move a Vulcan to the active next turn. Oh, the thing is that he does not really want to KO the Volcanion because that would leave him with only one prize card left. And uh, well, he could then go for a Ranguru, but what you really want to do in this late st gates, yeah, state of the game is like you, you want to go for the big EX or maybe a temporary late EX. Yeah, I, I probably, uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's a case now of whether Tord tries to play this more aggressively. And there we go. I was literally yeah. about to say more aggressively going for the Galissapod, uh, trying to use that crossing cut GX to get the final knockout as quickly and efficiently as possible. He knows that Zenyak's only got two cards in hand. Yeah. The chances of him being able to hit that Guzma in order to get that Wimpod back into the active are very low. So he's going to actually use the resource management attack here. Tord probably using the resource management attack here. Um, getting a Galissapod back into his deck. Um, using puzzles of time next turn. Um, so yeah, definitely the best way to win possible for Tord here. Being able to Guzma back into the active yeah. of Volcanion and using that hefty 180 damage from crossing cut in this matchup to knock out a Volcanion. Um, Zenyek really has to come up with some options here. Yeah. Just an ultra ball in hand. Nothing much going on for him. He's really backed in a corner here. And by the way, guys, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Tort is playing a Max Potion. We just saw it. But he wrote it on the other side of his deck list and not in, in line with all the other cards. That, that's why I missed this part. Uh, I was pretty sure he, he was playing one. But uh, yeah, just to, to confirm and correct this, there is a Max Potion in his deck list, uh, on his deck list and in his deck. And we see an energy retrieval come down here from Zenyek. Uh, steam upping twice, again being able to do 90 damage with the Volcanium. That does actually knock out the Orankuru here. Yeah. So Tord's very lucky he was actually able to get off that resource management last turn to get that double puzzle back in deck. As it's most probably going down here, uh, this final energy most probably being attached to a Volcanium. Or the Tapulele. Or the Oranguru. Maybe he's he's wanting to make sure to not get Guzmat and then stuck in the active position. Yeah, perhaps that's uh, Zenyak's best option here. He has actually instructed into a Sycamore, which is absolutely huge at that point. It um, is. Yeah, that Sycamore comes down. That gives him seven cards. Uh, he needed that Guzma, though, that he just discarded with that Sycamore. I think that was his last one. Yeah, he plays, uh, plays three. three copies of Guzma. Um, and the enhanced hammer on the Wimpod, wow. that is huge as well. It Taking is. away the option of the crossing cut next turn, that definitely spears another turn for Zenyek with two completely powered up Volcanions now, both with choice bands. Tord's in trouble here. Yeah, we see Tord putting up the hood of his hoodie. <laughs> Uh, I wonder why he did that, because with all the fire Pokemon, it should probably be hot at the battlefield. Um, I don't think Zenyek's taken his prize yet for that Oranguru. Oh, yeah, he has not taken his prize card for the Oranguru yet. Uh, uh, but we that's will definitely relevant as well, because it does mean that the Wimpod knockout uh, will actually win in the game. So David's just going to run down there now and make sure that he does take that prize. Yeah, don't worry guys, we got you. So, yeah, that puts Tord on two prizes, Zenyek on one prize. Yeah, David just informed him, and he is taking the prize card. And... Yep. Yep. Take that prize. Cool. 
the head judge actually saw it, but they, he, he also had to run, so. Okay. <laughs> Oh, the head judge saw it as well. Oh, okay, right. Oh, okay. The, ju <laughs> to run as well, right. the head yeah. judge, David, David, slightly quicker than our head judge here, getting down there. Um, <laughs> both of them saw that. Uh, actually, a very big tempo swing there if he didn't actually pick up that prize. It does give him the option to knock out that wind pod. However, if Todd's smart here, he will evolve it, uh, meaning that... Um, he needs to. Yeah, meaning that it won't be able to be knocked out with just a steam up from a power heater here, he will have to move in a Volcanian as well to knock out the Galisopod. He knows that Zenyek doesn't have any Guzma. Actually, he might not know. He might think that Zenyek plays sort of the standard count of four Guzma here and not just the three. Yeah, and we see a double puzzle going for Field Blower and Tapu Lele. Um, Tord must know what the last two prices cards on his deck is uh, I've seen a grass energy uh, I haven't really seen the second card I think it was another puzzle I believe oh he played um, parallel city to discard his wind pod and um, yeah that was yeah. an absolutely excellent play there from Todd um, he knows exactly what he's doing he knows this game inside out um, brilliant play there from Todd taking away that easy option of the prize there and not only that uh, he also uh, we have the other side of Feral City is that fire Pokemon deal 20 damage less. So that's also something we should keep in mind. That means uh, potentially one steam up ability more is needed to get the KO. Yeah, of course, uh, that sets him back a little bit more. It means he's going to need one extra steam up to be able to knock out that Zoroark. And as you can see, there's no room on his board for another Volcanian to come down, meaning that he can't actually one-shot the Zarawak anymore. Well, that's interesting. Uh, extremely, extremely good play there from Tord. Uh, getting rid of those choice bands as well. Setting back the damage, even an extra 50 by getting rid of that. Um, impressive indeed. Uh, getting rid of that win pod. Taking away uh, Zenyak's main win con here. Uh, as you can see, I think there is a Guzma in hand, right? Yeah, I think what Zenyak just checked were the amounts of ends and puzzles of time in the Luska pile because Tord only has one card in his deck left and if he can maybe Guzma stall the Tapu Lele or the Zorak GX that could be a win condition for Zenyak as well. Uh, I think Tord has Guzma in hand though. Okay, yeah. I think this is game for Tord. I'm sure I saw the Guzma there. Um, absolutely expertly played there from Tord to swing that around if he does have the Guzma. But taking the away. Game, he deals 80 damage with that Zorak. There are 80 damage on the damaged uh, Volcanion. It's not the KO yet. Uh, with. With choice ban, it would be. Oh no, it's not a Guzma, it's a Cynthia. My bad. Um, oh. Yeah, he hits the double puzzle there. He gets the Guzma. He gets down the DCE. Yeah. And, and that's, that's game. game. Uh, absolutely fantastically played there. Tord saw that the last puzzle was in his uh, deck there. He uses the Cynthia to shuffle in, knowing that he gets that second puzzle there. Going back in his discard pile, and of course getting exactly what he needed. Yeah, he used the Cynthia for trade. So just to make that sure he did not play two supporter cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cindy of Trey drawing into that. Uh, the I just actually can't believe the way that that game went. Um, yeah. Tord absolutely taking away every option that Zenyek had on that last turn there, almost checkmating himself the game, allowing him to completely take over in last la those last few turns. Yeah, uh, that's, that's something that happens to me as well when I, I play against Philip or Robin. Uh, I feel like I'm ahead at the beginning and then at some point I just lose and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost it's almost as if Zenyek really yeah. felt that he was in control there. He almost felt that he definitely had the game in hand. Uh, he felt that he was very much in control, especially yeah. having that Guzma. He had his eyes on that Wimpod and he thought... This is it. I've, I've pretty much got game. Yeah, However, Tord took all of that away from him in a flash. And of course, uh, Zenyak had no options then. Yeah, and then there comes some late game and an Oranguru magic. And you just don't know what's happening. And at some point, you just give the game out of your hand. And they manage to win. 
Yeah, the Oranguru <laughs> really coming in uh, in clutch in that matchup as well. Outputting a 90 damage, as we yeah. mentioned, two-shotting a Volcanion. Uh, that actually puts quite a lot of pressure on Zenyek uh, not to allow anything to stay in the active yeah. after being hit by that Oranguru, forcing him to use his Guzma resources early on to get out of that confusion. Tord knew then that the chances of him drawing into that Guzma late game would be lower. So it, it actually gave Zenyek a, a lot more of a hard time, especially yeah. only playing that... Um, that three Guzma count. Um, yeah, that Oranguru really putting him work. The worst thing possible for Zenyak here in this second game would be for him to prize any of his Guzma, meaning that Oranguru would become even more effective for Sword, yeah. allowing him to perhaps pull ahead extremely quickly, outputting that 90 damage, and things being locked in the active, meaning that he can take a two prize knockout with just a one prize Pokemon. Yeah, Zenyak was a little bit fortunate that he never really had to attack while being confused. Uh, but we need to see how this is going to work out in the next match. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what happens here. Perhaps Tord will get a slower start this time, which Zenyet can take advantage on, or the other way around. Uh, we saw the Max Elix has come into play very early last game. Tord's probably going to hope not for the same thing. He seemed to fall behind very quickly, and it looks like Zenyet does actually start the Lele here. Uh, uh. The Acer Roller actually hit in his hand this time, so... We might actually see that come into play this game. And we see an enhanced hammer prized again for Zenyek. Two um, not very nice for him. Not very nice for him. We saw that uh, enhanced hammer come in handy right at the end there in the mm -hmm. last game with that win pod. Almost a game winning play for him there, taking away towards main win con. Um, however, towards prize cards don't look that good as well. We see Max Potion being prized, one Zorak, uh, Tapu Lili, and is this a field blower? I believe it is a field blower, yes. So, obviously, we saw those field blowers come in handy last game, getting Max rid of that fighting fury well. belt. Yeah, that Max Potion as well, really important. Um, that field blower getting rid of those fighting fury belts getting rid of those choice bands meaning that volcanic heat can't output as much damage meaning that it has to get three full steam ups in order to do yep. anything threatening to a zoroark but not only that those fighting fury belts taking volcanian up to 220 hp and the baby volk up to 170. yeah yeah They're, those are really hard numbers to hit um Zenyak, just looking through his deck here um he's gonna grab the tapu lele it'll be interesting to see whether he does go for the lily here or if he does discard uh, more energy using the sycamore but i think there's not really the need of discarding more energies uh, he already discarded two energy cards with the otter ball which is pretty good for your first turn however if i was him here i would perhaps maybe want to go for the sycamore discarding more energy and trying to get off a turn two nitro tank yeah setting up as quickly as True. possible uh, one of the things that people uh, don't really look at very often is getting off that early game nitro tank that actually gets you five energy on board meaning that the necessity for elixirs is essentially just a bonus allowing you to set up more pokemon but he could easily have two volcanian ready to go with just one nitro tank on turn two and that would definitely put a lot of pressure on tord yeah, we see him attaching a floatstone on the Chapulele. Um, it, it's nice to have a free retreater in your uh, active position. Of course, it, it leaves you a lot of options. We see the baby ball coming down, attaching an energy. There's also a max elixir. Uh, I think well, he's going to play that Yep. Yeah, definitely. I think that's uh, pretty much exactly how he would have wanted that turn to go. Uh, while not looking for the Nitro Tank, he definitely wanted to see that Baby Vault there. Unfortunately, he does miss that Elixir. However, yeah. he will have uh, access to Power Heater next turn, getting two Fire Energy on the bench. Yeah, true. Um, let's see what, what Ford's going to do. Um, probably going for Bridget turn one, but... Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, Bridget turn one? I've never heard of that play before. Really? Uh, very, very unlikely there, Bridget yeah, turn it's one. it's a secret. Uh, it's a secret get play only the real pro players do. Yeah, I don't think I've ever <laughs> heard of that one. He does have two Ultra Balls in hand, though, so I think we will probably see that Tapu Lele hit the board. And yes, we will definitely be seeing a Bridget this turn from Tord, I would imagine. Um, we see Pearl City coming. Two Guzma play. come down from that Ultra Ball, Aww. though. That is very sour. Obviously, Tord knows that he plays that resource management, uh, Orangiri, to get those back in the deck later on. He does play those puzzles, but still pretty sore to have to discard two of those. It is. Um, 
however, Tort is playing four Guzmas, so he still has two of them in the deck. And uh, maybe he thinks with something like Puzzle of Time in his decks, his Guzmas are more available to him in the discard pile, but... Uh, Perhaps. I mean, it's all a case of, you know, he'll still have to trade into those puzzles. He'd still have to trade into the Guzma. Uh, perhaps Tor so does have a game plan, though. Uh, I think definitely with the resource management Oren Guru as well. He knows that they're not yeah. they're not lost. He knows he's able to get access to those again. So maybe not a bad play overall. Uh, I didn't actually see the rest of his hand as well. Perhaps it would have been a lot worse to discard those instead. But uh, we do see the Bridget here going for almost exactly the same Bridget as the last game. Uh, getting two Zoriwa and a Tapu Koko, giving him pretty much an identical board to what he had last game. Yeah, I know that Tord is playtesting a lot. And when I say a lot, I really mean a lot. Like, uh, I heard... Uh, hours yeah, every day. I heard on his interview with Omnipoke, uh, he said a minimum of five hours every day. Yeah. Um, an immense amount of training there, and it really shows the hard work does pay off. Consistent results from Tord, consistent game plans, always got up with something, always knows how to get around something, and it just shows when you work hard, when you see things before, you'll know how to do it in real life. Yeah, and I think that's also something that really comes into account when you play a long tournament, because you, you've you done it before, you've done it a million times before, and it's just your routine. You don't really have to think about most of the plays, because you've done them before, you were in similar situations, and you don't really have to think them through to the very end, because you already did so. Uh, Zenyak did get a Volcanian in hand there, but played the Cynthia without playing down the Volcanian. Perhaps not quite ready to put it down. I, I think it's because of the Parallel City. Oh, Parallel City. Oh, I didn't notice the Parallel was still <laughs> out, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, not putting down that could really be uh, detrimental for him. He needs to get rid of that Parallel City, as that Power Heat is not very effective by putting energies just on Tapu Lele's. Of course, it does give the other Tapu Lele... Uh, an almost free retreat cost as well but unfortunately that's not where he wants the energy he wants to try and get them on a volcanian and he wants to get them on there very quick yeah and it's very unfortunate because uh you you actually want to use both the tortinator and the baby volcanian to power up your other pokemon but now he's not able to attach pokemon to the tapu lele and uh, two volcanians because tapu lele is on the bench uh, the only thing I can see here that might be really good for Zenyak to do, uh, he can power heater here, attaching another one to the Turtonator. However, Tord is most probably going to hit into this Volcano in this turn, yeah. and he does have an Acerola in hand as well as an Ultra Ball. So perhaps being able to pick up that baby Volk, Ultra Balling for a Volcanian, and then being able to use Nitro Tank next turn, setting up his Turtonator, and setting up a Volk EX, actually giving him quite a good board state. But still, that would be a huge way of playing around these cards i just checked zanyak's deck list he is not playing any field players and only two brooklet hills one of them is priced so getting rid of the parallel city will be hard yeah that's going to be a tough challenge for him especially with no draw support like trade he's going to have to draw into that naturally yeah. off a sycamore or an end here so he's really going to be hoping to hit into that sooner rather than later because that Parallel City is really doing him some damage now, especially with two Lele on board. He needs to get rid of it, and he needs to get rid yeah. of it soon. Um, I think the Acerola player next turn is probably his best option, allowing that Nitro Tank to come into play. Um, however, I don't know if there'll be any energy in his discard. He could obviously discard the one-off Steam Up. Um, yeah, but therefore he needs also energy in his hand. Uh, he, oh no, he. I was just about to say that he discarded two energy cards with the Ultra Ball, but those are already yeah, attached. Yeah, they would be attached now. Uh, perhaps just being able to go for the Bright Flame attack. Uh, he's not got a lot of options here. He has got the energy retrieval, meaning that if he did Ace of the Baby Volk, he could steam up. Yep. Uh, he could grab something with the Ultra Ball, steam up with the Volcanion, energy retrieval. Put it back on the Turtonator. That's still not enough to get a knockout on any Zoroark, apart from the one with the 30 damage there at the front. Yeah, it is. Um, we see Torrid playing in uh, Evo Zoda. This is something you usually see in uh, Zoroark deck style, also play other evolutions. Um, it's nothing uncommon. Yeah, it allows those Zoroarks to hit the field a lot easier. As well as that, an interesting fact about Evo Zoda is uh, when the Stadium Potan is in play, you don't actually take the three damage from evolving yep. while using Evo Soda. 
So that's another really nice way to get those Zoroarks on field and keeping them at that high 210 damage rather than that a lot easier to hit 180 damage. Yeah, it is. And Tord hits into the Wimpod and the Field Blower off that trade. Uh, the Wimpod, again, could be his final win con here, but definitely not wanting to put it down too early in the game. Yeah, also his bench is full. And here we go with the DCE. Um, it depends on whether Tord here is going to attach it to the Zoroark or if he's going to try and find a way to retreat and use another one. Uh, he's attaching the double colorless energy to the active Zorak. Um, he has a full bench, so that makes the maximum damage output for uh, Rage of Speed Chain. I'm and not really sure if he really wants to KO this Volcanion, but as you mentioned before, um, Zenyak has a, a Sorola in hand. So. I think the smartest play possible for him right now would definitely be. Acer rolling this Volk, using that Ultra Ball there to get another Volcanion EX yep. out, putting it on the bench, and then trying somehow to get the maximum. Oh, he drew a Sycamore. Ooh. Okay, that is a real, real good top deck. I didn't actually see that. That was fantastic. Um, that Baby Vault remaining in the active, though. That Parallel City still there as well. He, drew he hits the, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Hill. Hill. Everything is going the right way for him on <laughs> this turn. That Brooklyn Hill getting rid of that Parallel City. However, though, that is his last opportunity to get rid of that Parallel City. It could really, really hurt him here if Tord puts down another one. He is yeah. able to get rid of those Tapu Leles. However, yeah, one of them having one of his float stones on it, leaving him with less retreat options. Those Volks have no energy on them. He could be dragged up into the active, and he could stall out this game very easily. Yeah, that's true. Um, we see him using it one steamer, and um, I think uh, he has no really other options uh, other than attacking now. Yeah, the power heater I think doing a total of fifty there. Yeah. Um, putting an energy on Volcanion, I think that's right. He doesn't want to overload the tier, giving it a huge bullseye marker for a Guzma there having all of its energy on there. He wants to start spreading it out over his board, just so Tord has plenty of options on where he needs to get rid of the uh, the threat, should I say. So, good play there by Zenyak. It would have probably been a mistake to attach the third energy to Turtonator, yep. as Tord would definitely go hunting for that then. Of course. And Tord, plenty of options in hand. He trades away the Wimpod, grabbing an Enhanced Hammer. Not very relevant in this matchup, but definitely a good tech card for this deck in the Mirror Match. It is, and uh, we see Tord, he just threw into a Mew EX. Uh, this is something you actually just trade away in this matchup, you, because you don't need it. Uh, not only do you not need it, but 120 HP against a Volcanion, yeah. very scary. Uh, Volcanic Heat doing a minimum of 130, that's a free two prizes in my eyes. Uh, I think Zenyek would be very happy to see a Mew EX on the board. Yeah, um, yeah I think I think it would almost be a dream come true for him. <laughs> but we see Tor uh, playing the Mellow. Uh, it allows him to put any two cards in your deck, and the synergy with Zorak GX tradeability is just great. Yeah, it's a uh, it's one of the best cards in the deck. As much as uh, a lot of the decks only play one or two. Uh, absolutely fantastic card, can really swing, it allows you to grab whatever you need. Tor put in one puzzle on the top of his deck, meaning that he most probably has one in hand already, meaning he can dive back into that discard pile again and grab whatever cards he needs to overcome Zenyak here. Um, this Zoroark probably taking a knockout on the Baby Volcanion. And Zenyak with just three cards in hand, I'm not sure what they are, I didn't get to see, but he needs to be able to knock out that um, yeah. Zoroark. And obviously set up his board a little bit more next turn. As once that Turtonator goes down, there's not too much going on for him. That's true. Um, uh, we see him using another trade. And now drawing into the metal cards. And the Bridget in the discard pile. Of course, once uh, Bridget has been used, Tor does play three. But that's the great thing about these uh, Zoroark decks. You're able to just thin out your deck and get yep. rid of those later in the game. So they don't uh, get in your way at any point. And obviously, they don't sort of stop you from making any good plays. And the Tapu Koko comes out here for a flying flip. Um, 
that damage actually taking these Volcanians down to 160. Uh, still not low enough for uh, Zoroark to take them out with a choice band. However, it does take that Turtonator down to 170. But if he managed to do two Flying Clips, which is not out of the range of possibilities with the current game state, this would put them into one hit, or, well, into knockout range with Zoroark. Yeah, two Flying Flips here would really swing the match up. Yep. Uh, allowing those Volcanians to be knocked out by Zoroarks is huge. Taught with access to uh, more puzzles at times, being able to even grab those choice bands, because as we saw, there's no field blower in yeah. Zenyak's list, which means that once they're attached, he has them for the rest of the game. Which means that just for a DCE, he could be taking out knockouts every turn. Mm -hmm. That's pretty worrying. Uh, Zenyak needs to come up with a plan here to overcome that. He probably knows that that Taipu Koko is a huge threat now, and he needs to try and get this baby Volk out of the active somehow. He's already discarded the Acerola, so that's not an option anymore. Uh, he needs to, um, a Guzma here would move the Tapu Koko back yeah. onto the bench, so that's not a possibility either. He doesn't play anything like Counter Catcher, and of course the equal on prizes. So he really he wants to hasn't get got a lot of, of options. It, but well, actually, he would rather be attacking with Nitro Tank GX. Uh, but he he decided to go for the Guzma play and go for the damage Zoro. He goes to the damage Zoroark, uh, really hoping it'll be great if he, and he did, I was about to say it would be great if he drew the prizes and grabbed Enhanced Hammer here. Yeah. That would actually allow him to get rid of another DCE, uh, hopefully pushing Tord backwards a little bit, pushing a little bit of pressure on Tord's side to hit that DCE. Uh, we know that one was attached to that Zoroark, so that's one in the discard. That would be two then with that Enhanced Hammer, and of course, Tord's already used two puzzles. Yeah, he did. But we also know that he's playing this resource management Oranguru, so there are a lot of options for him to get those cards back. Yeah, definitely. And we see, of course, the me traded there into the discard. Uh, no surprise there whatsoever. And he all. does draw into that DCE. Um, hopefully not playing it down this turn. Of course, Tor doesn't know of the enhanced hammer yet in Zenyek's hand, but he did see it last game, yeah. so I'm sure Torg will be very wary of that and try to play around it as much as possible, not putting down that DCE until he really needs it. Yeah. But the flying flip here will become active again, taking those Pokemon right the way down, and would it be a knockout on the Baby Volk as well? That's 148, it, it no, it'll have 10 it. HP left. Um, but with a field thrower, he would have one uh, knockout available. Yeah, I think uh, with a field blower, being able to take a prize before he even attacks this turn would be great. And the parallel comes down, uh, actually minusing the attacks of Zenyak's Pokemon this yep. time by 20. Uh, obviously, would not be smart from Tor to play it down the other way, because I'm sure <laughs> that baby vault would be going straight in the discard. Yes. <laughs> and also all the other damaged Pokemon. Uh, but... Uh, minusing 20 on that, again, as we mentioned last game, means that Zenyak has to get an extra steam up, and of course, only two Volcanion on his bench, yep. meaning that the option for three isn't there for him. Yeah, and let's see what's going to happen. Um, he has a double colorless energy in his hat. We see double puzzle for a Guzma. And... I, I'm also so sure about the cards in his Discord pile, so I'm not so sure about the option he has. Oh, but he's he is eyeing up. He's with grabbed the both Guzma, those Guzmas yeah. back. Uh, they're going to become pretty important in this game, especially after the second fly and flip. Torts needs to be able to drag those Volcanians off the bench, being able to get that knockout with the DC yeah. and the choice ban as often as possible. He needs to pretty much be taking knockouts every turn. Um, but he retreats the Tapu Koko. And it looks like he's going to... Oh, he's going to go for the oh. Guzma to drag up that Volk with an energy on it. Uh, as we said before, that's a trap you can fall into with Volcanion. Not being able to retreat very easily. Um, not many cards in Zenyek's hand either. And the Flying Flit's going to become even more effective here. Uh, as it knocks out the Volcanion. And a Grass Energy down on the Lele, making Tord immune to that Guzma play as well. Being able to grab the Lele back out of the di uh, out of the active spot. Only four minutes left to go. Um, oh, did I miss something? Is it not a 
Knockout, yeah. No, we said it's got um, 10 HP left, doesn't oh, it? It's yeah, 170 true. with the Fighting I'm, Fury I'm belt. Uh, it was, it'll definitely be a knockout if Thor's able to find that for the field blower, though, of course. But just 10 HP left on that baby Vulcanian. Tor could even opt here to go for another fly and flip uh -huh. while that Vulk is stuck in the active because it doesn't hurt him at all. It allows him to grab as many cards as he want and continue to put up the pressure. But, of course, we do see that Enhanced Hammer come down. Yeah. Again, Tor... Uh, Definitely playing around that enhanced hammer by not putting down the second DCE. Uh, instead, putting down a grass energy on the Lele in order to get it to be able to retreat with any Guzma plays. So, definitely smart there from Tord. However, now it's a dilemma where he needs to decide, does my DCE go on my Zoroark or does it go on the Tapu Koko again? But I think he, he does not really continue attacking with Fly and Flip anymore. The like, Tapu Koko has done its job. It, it put all the Pokemon in knockout range and uh, that's what his... his Task was and the enhanced hammer is not really hurting him. Yeah, of course, that's what I was going to say. Of course, uh, the correct play here would be to go for Zoroark, uh, get that choice ban. As Tor's no longer got any puzzles left to him, uh, that resource management, Oranguru, not on the field as of right now. However, the parallel city's gone due to that Brooklet Hill, so he is able to play it if he must, but. Is that Fighting Fury the right play here? Um, that means he doesn't have access to the Float Stone now. But it also puts it out of one hit range. In case Tord, Tord gets two more bench Pokemon. And if I was Tord here, I would just be Guzmaring out the other Volk with no energy on it and no Fighting Fury belt. Being able to take a knockout there. Yeah. Or, well. or alternatively, just use that magical field blower card. I mean, it, it pretty much does the same job, right? But field blower or Guzma here would be pretty perfect for Tord, allowing him to take those prizes. He's one game up anyway, so he's probably feeling pretty comfortable right now, knowing how much time he has left. Uh, I think we pretty much have game here for Tord. Um, he's playing this game at a nice pace for himself, not putting too much pressure on himself, not playing too aggressively as he knows. He's probably not going to be keep be able to keep up with a Volcanian's aggression. Yeah. Um, strategically placing knockouts, getting that damage spread out so he's able to take them at a slow rate, but a rate to where he knows that this game is in his hands. Yeah, and um, let's see how if he is able to keep this game in his hands. Of course, using that Brooklet Hill there to look through his deck. Um, use up a couple more seconds there on the <laughs> clock. Just double checking if there are any magical water Pokemon in there that he just forgot were in his deck list. Um, but of course, then grabbing that. He also gr finds the choice band that he needs. He's now got both the DC and the choice band. Does he have access to the Guzma here? Ooh, we'll see. But didn't he grab a second Guzma with the Puzzle of Times? Uh, it, it should still be in his hand, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should be. And we see one trade Zorua hit in hand I don't know if it's worth playing down at this point in the game uh, unless well he does he need the damage output damage. for he does need the damage output uh, unless he puts it down he's not going to be able to hit the maximum 120 however by putting them down he does give easy prizes to Zenyek uh, just 20 seconds left to go though oh my god yes I completely forgot about the time, to be honest. And by the way, those players, they don't see the timer, so... And yeah, yeah that's the second trade there from Tord. And that is time up on our game, so... It's time in Tord's round. Tord's, ra Tord's round is turn zero. And it's turn zero. And it's turn zero on Tord's... Uh, Tord should be pretty happy there. I'm pretty sure there's no way possible for Zenyak to take all six prizes in just two turns. Yeah, that that's pretty impossible. Uh, Tord now can take as long as he needs to make all the right decisions here to make sure that make sure that he takes all the options away from Zenyak here. If he, if Tord can recognize a way that he might be able to take all six prizes, <laughs> he needs to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, but to be honest, I don't really see that coming. But no, I think here we do have game for Tord. Um, it'll be interesting to just see what the last couple of cards that come down here. However, Tord 
being very clinical and just making sure, checking the discard still, making sure that there is no way possible here <laughs> for him to drop this uh, game, making it go to sudden death. Um, yeah. I think he also wants to make uh, to, to show that he he did not only win this game because of time and to to also he knows that this game is on stream obviously so he wants to make sure that that he can really prove that he would have had the the skill to win this game and Todd making a really smart play here I'll explain yes yeah, so Todd making a really smart play there he knows that the way Zenyak can actually take knockouts is getting a third Volcanian down, being able to use Volcanic Heat three times. So opting not to knock out the baby Volcanian, making space on his bench for that third Volcanian EX. He Very can't smart use there. Volcanic Heat three times. Todd is turn zero, then Zenyak has a chance. Oh, not Volcanic Steam, steam Up. Sorry, Steam yeah. Up. Wrong, wrong name for the ability. <laughs> being able to use Steam Up three times, increasing okay. that damage output. Um, so he knows that... That's uh, Zenyak's only option to be able to take his attack all the way up to 200 yeah. plus damage. So by not knocking out that baby vault, there's no room on his bench for that. And he knows that that pretty much seals the game. Yeah, and there comes an uh, ending Zenyak down to only four cards. He does not have an Oranguru in play. This could also be the reason for not discarding the uh, Fighting Fury belt. So Zenyak has no Oranguru available. And the end comes down, taking both players up to a full six card hands. No prizes taken yet in this game. Zenyak has taken two prizes, hasn't he? Oh yeah, he has, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Very early on, completely. Like That was literally like two and two, wasn't it? And it's been a whole 30 minutes since then. And that's also why Zenyak still has a potential win option. It's theoretically possible to take two prices in two uh, four prices in two turns so two prices per turn it doesn't look like he has a lot of options he does have a Cynthia in hand of course drawing into that ultra ball so we could actually get that volcanian down if Tor did opt to knock out the baby volk yeah he'd also drew into double colorless energy so he could go for flying flip uh which would also be a ko on the volcanian wouldn't it yes yeah yeah <laughs> The, I think he's really well he, he turned into the thinking toward again and, and uh, he puts down the two bench Pokemon outputting that damage and we're going to see a KO on this Volcanian EX taking Tor down to four prizes um, that now again so as I said uh, with an extra bench space Zenyek might have been able to get a third Volcanian down for the steamer, being able to uh, do as much damage as possible. However, by taking out that Vulcan, the active, that now puts him yeah. down to two again, meaning that this one doesn't really make a difference, even though he's grabbed it. It does not. So, Zenyet um. with no real options here. Um, the max... But still, he has two Volcanians in play. If he managed to guard... Uh, well. He's got to get uh, his choice band, which he plays only. He only has one more of in deck. Oh uh, yeah, it's gonna um, be hard. And I think, yeah, they are talking to each other. And I, I think I just saw Senya kind of gesturing, like, well, let's see how this is going to end. But I don't really see that ending for me in the next. Yeah, Next the reason turns. the reason I keep mentioning this Volcanian play is obviously Zenyak knows he's only got that one choice band right there in his deck left. Uh, the chances of him hitting that are very low. Um, I mean, actually, he's off the up draw. That he's drawing into that Turtonator though, which means he does only need one steam up. He can knock out this Zoroark here. He's got another turn after that. We could see Zenyak clutch it out, but I think Tord will probably have a game plan here for this. Yeah, it took a very long double time. Double and triple counting, making sure the math is correct, not making any mistakes because those will be crucial. And we see him using two steam up, retreating the Chapel LGX. And we will see the knockout. Turn A only going down to two energy here with the bright flame attack. And yet down to two prizes. Ah. Uh, this is ah. 
very tense, very tense indeed. Um, he needs a lot on his last yes. turn. Uh, he needs to be able to get an attachment and two steamer to be able to knock out a Volcanion. Um, alternatively, needs a Guzma to pull the Lele into the active mm -hmm. for just one steamer to be able to knock it out. I imagine Torb will probably want to go for an N here, minimizing Zenyek's hand size. He doesn't have an Oranguru on board. He doesn't have space to put down another Lele. Um, he would need to then literally draw all three of those cards out of his three cards there that he'd get at, um, from the two to at the end yeah. to two and his draw for turn. Yeah, yeah. He would need one energy for to attach to Trojanator, one energy to use Steam Up. And a choice band yeah. or a second steam up. And he feel blows away. The fighting theory about he does knock out that baby volcanium. Draws one price card. Whew. That would mean that if Zanyak had an Oranguru available uh, in his hand, he could place it and this would be uh, well, a little bit better drawing options, but we see him grabbing an N with a Tapu Lele GX. Um, of course, I think there's yeah. no other play here. N is no. definitely correct. Taking Zenyak all the way down to two cards. Um, obviously, he could be extremely lucky here and draw exactly what he needs. However, the chances are pretty slim. They are. We he does see N. the N. Uh, Zenyak can't be happy with that. He did have a pretty big hand size there. However, now going all the way down to two, he's got to hope and pray here for something to come out of this. I wonder why he attached the double colorless energy to the Tapu Lele GX. Four, six, eight, one hundred. And Zenyak draws, I think, Guzma and Switch. Guzma and Switch. He retreats for Tapu Koko, and all he can hope for now is for Zanyak not to draw into... He's got yeah. Cynthia, but no way to Cynthia and get a two prize Pokemon into the active here for Zanyak. I think that seals it up. I think that's game. I think that's it's it, yeah. Game. And absolutely huge congratulations to Tord. Very well played there at the end of the game. Uh, we flip back and forth. We thought that Zanyak had uh, no chance there because he had uh, six prizes left. Yeah. It turned out he actually had four, so... <laughs> very grinded down to the end there by Zenyek. Uh, very well played by him as well. Uh, definitely always attaching that four energy to Turtonator, allowing himself to get off that bright flame as often as possible. Uh, Tord, however, once again, taking away all of the options that he had to win, moving that Tapu Koko back yeah. into the active, meaning Zenyek could only take a maximum of one prize. Very well played by Tord. Yeah, and I wonder if we can get Tord for a short winner interview. Um... Uh, you know Tord, Tord is always up for a winner's interview. Yeah, uh, so... He loves winning. He uh, loves winning. He loves <laughs> yeah. winning. He does it slightly too often. However, very well played, especially in that first game when Tord was able to take away every option oh, possible. Oh, it looks like they are still discussing. No, I th they're laughing and stuff like that. I think that um, the judge is just talking to them most probably. I don't know. Um... Tord's already packed up all his cards, though, so I doubt that they can yeah, do anything about Zanyak it now. Yeah, but did not. But he's laughing, yes. Um, yeah, so game two, if the last turn ends during game two, if the active player has beaten the turn, if either player has fewer than 50% of their initial prize cards remaining, the player with the fewest prize cards remaining wins the game. Otherwise, the game does not count towards determining the winner. Yeah, so basically it's game two, and because Zenyak only has two prize cards left, but Tord has three, Zenyak wins. So it's 1-1 oh. now. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, will, um, we will see what happens there. I, I wrote the copy from the rules in the chat. And the chat say in there? I copied it from the rules in the chat, and this is the. I have the rules open here. Okay, the head judge is also there, so uh, we'll go into a sudden death. Yeah, uh, we really apologize, guys. I wasn't me and Lydia, obviously. Yeah, we're... yeah. The judges are just pointing out it's one one, so we will go sudden into death. a sudden we'll death. Go into a sudden death here. Uh, we wow. really apologize for that. We weren't familiar with that rule coming into play there. Um, 
I thought that uh, the player had to be firmly ahead with the other player on six prizes in order for that to happen. Uh, it takes us up to 1-1. Sudden death here. For those that don't know how sudden death works, both players start the game, get going, and then of course there is one prize card. The yeah. first player to take that prize card, they win the game. And it's also something you should keep in mind, there's only one prize card. So if you end your opponent turn one, he's only drawing one card. Yeah, so just for the record again, sudden death, they also have to flip again who goes first. Yeah. So, yeah, and then go first, ultra ball end. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, in this matchup, correct me if I'm wrong, Volcanian definitely has the upper hand here. Yeah, uh, Tord needs needing to, to evolve. evolve. Yeah, Tord needing to evolve. Tord needs two turns here to get something going. Zenyak, however, all basic Pokemon in his deck. If he is able to hit everything and he needs. And who is going to start? They flipped a, a die, but uh, obviously we did not hear what they were choosing. Ah. Uh. We did not see who got the head so that's going to be tense for the next couple of seconds as well we don't know we don't know who's going first as well but that is definitely the person with the upper hand here volk being on the upper hand in yeah. this matchup being able to hit those elixirs and take a knockout very early on in the game Whew. however if that end comes down turn one we could really be in for something exciting here well that, that's going to be super interesting our first top eight, and we've already had a sudden death. <laughs> um, Zenyak shuffling his deck again on the table, making sure that this loss can't come down to drawing the wrong cards whatsoever. He needs to make sure his first hand is perfect. He needs to make sure he gets everything he needs. Wow, I, I'm, I'm really excited here. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I, I think Tord's going to have a really hard time now. Um, it'll be definitely interesting to see how he tries to play around the fact that he has to evolve. Um, I think there's nothing you you can really play around there. You just I guess he could try and get a Tapu Lele inactive as yeah. quickly as possible, meaning that Zenyak's almost forced to find a Choice Band and Energy to be able to steam up as well. Um, that's his highest HP basic Pokemon. I think that's probably Tor's best option here, as well as that. With Tapu Lele, if he does get a Tapu Lele with a DC in the active early on, it means that if he does Zenyak, uh, let's say Tord goes first and he ends Zenyak to one, that means that that Tapu Lele then can start yep. doing a little bit of damage and obviously trying to take that first prize. But <laughs> it is Tapu Lele and N up on the screen. They are going to be the two significant cards here. Um, yeah, we just want to say again... Uh, Huge apologies for, obviously, saying there that Tord had taken that game. Yeah, um, we are very sorry. Of course, uh, Tord looking like he had stolen that game completely there. Uh, completely unaware, obviously, that this game could have gone to sudden death. However, even more excited now that it has. It'll be really interesting to see how both these players play. A lot of nerves on the table. And obviously a top four spot on the, on the ride. Yeah. And we wow. see the Tapu Lele oh. land in Zenyek's hand. It really depends now on who goes first. Uh, Tord, on the other hand, we see the Bridget. Great in any other case. Not necessarily <laughs> the best thing for right now. Not at all. Oh, Tord does not look happy at all. But he he has a starting Pokemon. And the there's person. a Sycamore and an Evo Soda in oh, the prize. Evo Soda could be huge. And Ooh. Tord does not look like he has a Wimpod in his starting hand. It looks like that's it. Uh, no oh access to an God. N by the looks of things as well. I think there might be an Ultra Ball on the end of his hand, but I'm not sure. But it looks like a Wimpod is his starting Pokemon. He really, well, he has the time to think things through uh, very well now. And uh, yeah, he, he takes his time. Okay. And I'm sure I saw a volcano. So let's see who's going to start. Toward drinking some more water. Both must be sweating. <laughs> yeah, very tense right now. It'll be... I can't imagine the pressure right now. Mm -hmm. Being in a sudden death in top eight of the Prague Special Championships. We obviously oh. that see that baby volcano at the front. Toward luckily had the Tapu Lele. Of course, though. 
He needed to start that Tapu Lele. Tord is starting. Tord is starting. Yeah. Oh, and Ultra he draws ball. the Ultra Ball off the top deck. <laughs> that is absolutely huge from Tord. Having ah. to start the Tapu Lele there rather than the Wimpard in order to set... Uh, give Zenyek a <gasps> harder time to knock something out. However, that Ultra Ball top deck allows him to get another Tapu Lele down in order to end Zenyek all the way down yeah, to Tapu one Lele card in hand. Yeah, going to be the MVP now. Absolutely it's very unfortunate that he has no double there. colorless energy. That would have been so huge. And Tord Bridget. Bridget! He goes to set up his board, hoping to get all the things he needs off these Zoruas. Um, plenty Maybe of cards in hand. Maybe he's also just going for Tapu Leles. You don't really want to put down those, those small Pokemons. And he goes to the Bridget here. Maybe also for Oranguru and Confusion. Very exciting here. Hopefully, Tord, he does have the Ultra Ball in order to get that end next turn, taking down Zenyak's hand. He's just really got to hope here that it's impossible he goes for... He for the Zeruas. He's got to hope it's impossible for Zenyak here to get all of the energy on the Volcanion. Choice Band, Steam Up, and Retreat with his hand. However, he does have Instruct on the board. So, plenty of opportunities. Yeah, it's very, very lucky that Zenya drew into the Oranguru from his starting hand so an Anne wouldn't have hurt him that much. As well as that, I think that one big thing to note is I'm sure, can't, I can't be 100% sure, but I did see Lily in Zenyak's opening hand as well. Wow. So, <sighs> Zenyak able to have access to eight cards in hand this turn as well, if he does wish. Um, this could be really exciting here. It is. He's playing a single puzzle to really make sure to have the best options. To see that he's drawing well and yeah. There are two Guzma at the top there as well. So those two Guzmas obviously being key cards in this. Being able to allow Tor to take the easiest knockout possible. Taking that one prize. Um, we'll perhaps see it on a Zoroark with a DCE yeah. on that Oranguru on the bench. But as you can see that Zenyek also with the Lele in hand. He can also grab an N. Taking Tord down to that one card hand. If I were him, I would definitely go for that hand. But also, he has no energies in his hand, I guess. So, but he has the instruct. He plays down another Volk. And he's got, he's got an N as well without even having to use the Tapu Lele. <sighs> Zenyak so has huge. everything here. Apart from the energies he needs to be able to take that prize. He's and he ends. And Tord just nodded. Nod, Tord yeah. just nods. He knew that that was most probably going to happen. He's like, mm, okay. Hmm. <coughs> and just one card in hand. However, the dream here for Tord would be a Zoroark GX or a draw supporter. Yeah, it would. Whew. Very tense. Zenyak here with the opportunity to knock the Tord Reklev out of top eight here. Um, a huge achievement for him if he does. Oh, yes. And especially in such an intense series. Winning feels really like you deserved it. <laughs> and here we go. Tord not revealing his card off not the end. Not even looking at it. And Zenyak. <laughs> oh, and he hits the energy. fire energy. Uh, that means that he's able to put out 20 damage and draw three cards. Uh, at least 20 damage this turn. What has he drawn here? He's not revealing it either. He's not revealing Come at on, all. Come on, guys. He doesn't want to give anything away. He doesn't want the audience stood around there as well to give anything away. Yeah, just there really are holding. people uh, around the area. But I think that they're just going to... Yeah. And Tord top decks the Tapu Ooh! Lele. Absolutely insane. He grabs a Cynthia. That is absolutely insane. Zenyet grabbing his head. Uh, really wow. not happy with that. Extremely lucky by Tord. But we see him strike again. He grabs the Cynthia. Shuffles in and gets six more cards. Absolutely insane. This is so it exciting. Is. Uh, a top deck there on the Tapu Lele. It Tor is... could not be happier. <laughs> it is completely different than a match with six prize cards because it's really about these small plays that keep you alive. And so. Tord's got to be over the moon there. He thought he was done for that Volcanian looking ready to go, especially he had more energy. But there is 
and it doesn't look like he got anything. But if he plays a parallel city with a site that makes uh, less damage, this Volcanion is not dealing any damage at all. Yeah, that's definitely right. And obviously, with those Zori were on the field, though, they're pretty vulnerable now uh, to a Guzma play. That's an easy, uh, easy prize there. Obviously, yeah. only having to take one. Uh, he, and he's actually however, limited. He decided to Zenyet's play the bench, Peril City yeah. on the other side. He limits his bench and Zenyek happy there. A little bit of Oh yeah, obviously he's playing that. That so that Zenyek has no space for a Tapu Lele on his bench. So Zenyek uh, has it much harder to get his ends. And he drops the Brooklet Hill anyway, gets rid of it. Uh, um, he has got space for that Lele, if he does so wish, but whether he needs it or not, he's got a Lily in hand there, ready to go. Yeah, Judge uh, was just asking him what, why is he looking at his uh, deck, but... He, yeah, 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 like Tord, Tord being <laughs> sportsman like there and saying that the Brooklet Hill came down this turn. <laughs> I guess the judge is also very tensioned. <laughs> <coughs> so Zenyek here, uh, really hoping to find um, Guzma drawing up one of those Zoroas. However, he probably needs to find a response this turn. Yeah. If he gives Torn another turn, he has got plenty of draw supporters in his hand. He had a Cynthia there for definite, giving him a new six, meaning that Torn can win the game next turn as well. Wow, it's so... Oh. Really, guys, this is so exciting. That Lele top deck was extremely fortunate for Tord there, ah. keeping him in this. I can't, I actually can't believe it. It's crazy. Uh, we wonder, <laughs> we wonder how he had so much success, and it's just wonder things like this. Wonder how he could wonder tag. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but Zanyak also is on fire. And he draws him with a fire <laughs> energy. There comes the choice <coughs> band. And um, using steam up once. Um, that also means that. And the lily oh. up to six. <coughs> wow. I wonder if he's able to draw into some mix elixirs now. That would no, be. <laughs> he didn't draw any of them, unfortunately. <sighs> However, the power heater being able to attach an energy to that Volk again. He has got Sycamore in hand. If Tord doesn't manage to pull it out that this turn, he has got another opportunity to get more energy on that Volk. We see another steam up. Ooh. And this Tapu Lele is really taking some damage here. And does he attach that choice band just to make sure that he has the maximum damage possible on I that Tapu Lele? So, yes. oh, what's happening now? It'll take him all the way up to 110. Yeah, the choice band comes down. That takes Apulule up to 130 damage, only needing 40 then on it in order for Zenyak to take this. However, the grass energy is there toward being able to just move it back onto yeah. the bench. But it's not really what you want to do. He could move it to the bench and then play Mix Potion, but it's a lot to ask for, and he does not have any Zoroks in play. And he does moment. have an Ultra Ball Ooh. off the top deck, though. Tord getting everything that he wants. Um, Tord can win this turn, definitely. He can grab the Zoroark here and take the knockout on Oranguru. If he does get the DC and the Guzma, he can definitely make that happen. The I Lele with the grass on that. it. He's got the Ultra Ball. He's got a draw supporter. He'll be able to use trade. Tord's got all the, all the things that he needs. It just depends if he can keep this luck up by... Getting the cards that he needs to win this game this turn. He's playing the Ultra Ball. And he is going for the Zoroark, probably. Yeah, yeah that's Zoroark what we're comes seeing. down. Alright, Tord with a parallel city in his hand. I don't think that becomes very much relevant. Um, yeah, he could uh, play it to the side that, so that he has only three points. Oh, he should move uh, his Lele, Lele to the yeah. bench, yeah, and get rid of that. Um, obviously lower in the Volcanians attacks as well. He's going to take away yeah. that win con from Zenyak. Getting rid of that. Resetting his board. Excellent. And, and then the Cynthia comes down. That 
does also mean that uh, Zanyak is again dealing 20 damage less. We should keep that in mind. However, that Zoroa coming into the active there, uh, that does mean that without a float stone, he's not going to be able to get the Oranguru yep. in the active. Yeah, he needs a second Zoroark. Yeah, he needs a second Zoroark here off the Cynthia. Obviously, very possible with six cards, plus the two from trade, but and he's Ultra really got to hope. There and is yeah, a Zoroark. there is the Zoroark in hand. Uh, the second one comes down. Oh my gosh, Todd absolutely killing it here. He knows Two how to play Zoroark. the trading card game, guys. Two Zoroark <laughs> off the Cynthia. Uh, the, the draws are absolutely insane for him right now. They Being are. able to trade as much as possible, as much chance as possible to get that Guzma. I didn't even expect to see a real match here. And now, oh my god. He discards the Wimpod of though. Of course, he does not want it and he cannot bench it. Discards the Wimpard, <gasps> needing to get rid of the Parallel City here if he wants to take the win this turn. Yeah, I think he's not playing for a win this turn. He is in a very comfortable position at the very moment. Even ends do not hurt him as much, so let's see. I'm not so sure about uh, the Double Colors energy, by the way. Did you... Does he have a double colors energy in his It doesn't hand? look like he does at the minute. Um, the only worrying thing for Tord though is if he doesn't play for the win this turn, uh, Volcanian can definitely take a knockout on a Tapu Lele. Yeah. He's going to use... No, he used all his trades. Um, choice ban. Oh no, this is the last trade. And... Oh my god, no double colorless energy. No double colorless energy. So the, the luck ran dry there for Tord, uh, not being able to take the game this turn. However, it opens it back up for Zenyak again. All he needs here is a fire energy, Guzma, and a steam up, and he's actually able to knock out that Tapu Lele. Yeah. And he feels blowers, the choice uh. band. Taking away that option from Zenyak, he now needs two uh, steam ups. Yeah, I think he's now just thinking about whether he likes to discard the Parallel City or... Well, he decided to He did to hit the only... Double Colorless. Oh, he did. He, he, hi he hid it from us. And doing 80 damage here. That Zenyak means needs... Guzma now would win him the game. No, well, if Zenyak would play playing Guzma, towards Guzma would now win him the game. And very, very, very important turn here for Zenyak. He needs to win here. Otherwise, it's most probably game over here for him. Um, the energy, energy goes down on the Volk. He has the Guzma in hand as well. But not access to the Steam Ups and the Power Ups. But he does have a Sycamore. He's going to have to go for that here. He also needs 20 less damage because of Peril City. So that does mean Power Heater deals 130? And he has to Sycamore. He can't Guzma. Ah. Oh. This is... But how is he going to retreat that Wakanyan? It is possible here. But he attached an energy already, didn't he? He did. He did. So how is he going to retreat He has it? a switch in his deck. He does play one of them. Oh, and he just I think realized. That's it. I think that's it. He doesn't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. He just realized that he is not able to. Oh no! Zenyak has just noticed that he needs one more card to be able to win. He's got all the fire energy for the steam ups. He just needed that Volk out of the active. Yeah. He has the field blower in there to get rid of the parallel as well. Ah. Uh. He has the float stone in hand as well, so... He oh. can field blower his Oh, no, I thought the float stone was a field blower. He uh, doesn't have it. He had game in hand there, but couldn't get the ball out of the active. That is well done, Tord. Um, after a really tense wow. uh, sudden death there, Tord came out on top, drawing absolutely insanely, being able to top deck the Tapu Lele there after being end to one. Fantastic series. Wow, that was such an intense game, and I think we really need to grab Todd for a very short interview. I think even getting both players over for an interview would be a really good opportunity. I, I don't yeah. think we have time for that because oh, do this we not game have time? To, to, to Oh, yeah, on. of course, we're doing the second yeah. top eight, of course. Uh, getting Todd over, interview with Todd next. 
and we are very excited to hear exactly what he we has to are. say about this game.